Foggy Jack Live is a Patreon supported podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Foggy Jack Live podcast. This is episode one of season one. I hope everybody enjoyed the introduction podcast. Um, it was just kind of fun to give a overview of the mascot, since I don't think there's anywhere that has the overview of him. Um, so I am your host, Freeman, and uh, today we're going to talk about um, a haunted attraction and a haunt story. This is how the podcast is going to be set up usually um, from here on out, um, unless I decide to make a drastic, cha- drastic change then it will be changed. But here we go. So for our first haunted attraction to be featured, it is the Headless Horseman Hayride and Haunted House. Um, it is located at 778 Broadway Route 9W in Ulster Park, New York. Um, <clears throat> the Headless Horseman Hayride and Haunted House is located in New York, like I just said, in the historic haunted Hudson Valley. The 250-year-old farm incorporates over 65 acres of naturally landscaped property, including foreboding woods, surreal ponds, fruit orchards, and much, much more. The Headless Horseman Hayride and Haunted House is a unique Immersive experience with a theme that changes each Halloween season. Uh, Featuring a theatrical one-mile hayride, a corn maze, and eight haunted attractions, which include the Lunar Motel, Glutton's Diner and Slaughterhouse, the Horseman's Tomb, Dark Harvest Corn Maze, Mama Rose, Mama Rose's Swamp Shack, Nightshade Nursery and Greenhouse, and Dr. Dark's Black Spider Circus Sideshow. Um, <clears throat> in addition, the creators of Headless Horseman Hayride and Haunted House are proud to present a new concept of an interactive, immersive entertainment. For real-life escape experience, Headless Horseman Escape Rooms, a first for the historic Hudson Valley. Headless Horseman continually evolves with the unusual monsters, amazing illusions, stunning special effects, unique and original costumes, makeup, animations, and frightening detail created by the sister company, American Made Monster Studios. Quote, only the courageous will survive the intense encounters with the infamous Headless Horseman. The attractions include line actors, four gift shops, um, five food options, and the Headless Horseman Hayride includes 350 actors and staff trained to provide a memorable and enjoyable evening for the whole family. They also include children day dates, which is smart for families. Um, The Headless Horseman Hayride Hayride and Haunted House has received numerous awards and honors, named number two haunted attraction in 2019 by USA Today, number one in America two consecutive years by Haunt World magazine. Haunt World is definitely where I would go personally to find out um, if you have questions about a haunted house near you, if you want a corn maze, a hayride. Um, if you're looking for props, makeup, I'd go to hauntworld.com. Definitely where I go for news and stuff like that. Um, they were named number one Hollow Scream by the Weather Channel. Number one outdoor attraction by American Airlines. Number one by USA Today. And many, many more. And in addition, Headless Horseman is consistently named in the top 10 haunted attractions by CNBC and AOL. Also, it is found to be featured on the Travel Channel, Comedy Central, Emerald Live, 
Good Morning America, Nightline, CBS, Evening News, the Today Show segment, Sarah in the City, and several national magazines. Along with the Headless Horseman uh, Haunted Hayride, an attraction, um, I like to add a story that goes along with either the theme of that attraction, the story behind that attraction, um, or even the stories that go on at the attraction. Um, Today, I decided that I would go with The Headless Horseman or Sleepy Hollow, the story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Washington Irvine's famous tale, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, and its iconic Headless Horseman were born of a mix of true history and unnerving folklore. The classic American ghost story follows the tale of Ichabod Crane, a superstitious schoolteacher who finds himself in a haunted town of Sleepy Hollow, where he suffers an ill-fated encounter with the town's infamous Headless Horseman before his mysterious disappearance from the community for good. The myth of the Headless Horseman, like much folklore, is shared across cultures. There are uh, many decapitated apparitions on horseback in both Scandinavian and North America, Northern European folklore. In Celtic traditions, for instance, there's the legend of the Dullahan. Sorry, I'm not Celtic. I don't know the correct pronoun- pronunciation of that one. A headless demon who careens about on a black horse. Um, in the Arthurian tale, Sir Gawain of the Green Knight um, to a knight of Camelot beheads a green giant after being challenged, only to witness the creature ride off with its bleeding head and toe. So abundant are these references to decapitation and folklore that some scholars believe society's historical fascination with beheading is symbolic of our anxiety surrounding male castration. Interesting. Sigmund Freud touches on this castration complex in his Medusa's head, but even without Freudian analysis, a headless anything can easily elicit fear. Like a headless horse, for instance, or what else would be scary that's headless? A ghost is always scary that's headless. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of things, I guess, that could be headless and scary. Um, (laughs) The American author of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, however, may have found some inspiration closer to home. A popular myth following the American Revolution was the story of the headless Hessian soldier. Hessians were German troops called upon to aid in Americans' fight against the British. In this particular And this particular Hennison was decapitated by a cannonball during the Battle of White Plains in 1776. Um, As the story goes, the corpse of the beheaded Hessian was buried soon after his death at the Old Dutch Church in Sleepy Hollow, near the small village of Terrytown, New York. It is believed that the Hessian would arise at night in search of his head, and anyone who was ill-fated enough to be visited by his apparition was was condemned to death. Um, Well, well, skeptics of the supernatural could argue against the existence of the Headless Horseman. Historical records show that there actually was a real decapitated Hessian soldier. In his 1798 memoir, Major General William Heath wrote, quote, a shot from the American cannon at this place, White Plains, took off the head of a Hessian artilleryman. Another soldier, Anthony Maxwell, is said to have witnessed the unfortunate death firsthand and talked about it for years after. That's not something I would talk about for years after. Being the horror fan that I am, (laughs) I think it would be hard to talk about someone getting decapitated. But I guess this is the 1700s. I guess it's not that 
strange. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> in seven. In 1817, Washington Irvine's family's business, a small legal practice ran by him and his brother, went bankrupt following the American, the British American War of 1812. Well, Irving had a respectable reputation as a writer, there was no real job prospects left in America for him. So Irving left New York for Birmingham, England, where his sister Sarah and her husband Henry Van Wart were already permanent residents. Um, it was here that Irving, Irving, sorry, plagued by writer's block since the unexpected success of his first book, A History of New York from the Beginning of the World to the End of Dutch Dynasty, years before. That is one heck of a name for a book. I thought Foggy Jack live podcast was a mouthful, but a history of New York from the beginning of the world to the end of the Dutch dynasty. Now that is a mouthful to say. Um, <clears throat> but finally, he was struck with renewed inspiration to write. A conversation with his brother-in-law had awakened in him old memories of his time in the Hudson Valley and with Irving's fascination with the community's Dutch past and local lore. Washington Irving spent all night writing his manuscript. It took him one night to write this? Man, if I could write my manuscript in a night, that would be awesome. But I can't even do it in a month or a year. I've been working on it for a long time. Um, his sister and his and brother-in-law, barely awakened and dressed for breakfast, were the first to hear the opening chapters of his collection of short stories that would later become known as the sketchbook. Okay, so it was a short story before. Yeah, okay. I guess you could do that all night. That's not hard. The collection of essays was issued serially throughout 19, 1819 and 1820 under Irving's preferred... Pseudonym, Jeffrey Cran. Crayon. Cran. Comment um, somewhere. <laughs> Do you say Cran or Crayon? Because I say Cran, um, but that's because I'm from Utah, so that's just me. Um, its later publications included a short story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Okay, so he wrote this in a night. It makes more sense now. It's f so, and we know from that it went on to be quite a success, quite a large thing. Um, everybody knows of the, the Headless Horseman or Sleepy Hollow. Um, its first known on screen adaptation was the 1922 silent film The Headless Horseman, and has since been retold to viewers again and again. Um, one of the most popular iterations of Washington Irving's famous horror story was 1999's Sleepy Hollow, um, a film directed by Tim Burton, excuse me, Tim Burton, and starring, of course, Johnny Depp, because Tim Burton and Johnny Depp go hand in hand. Um, Johnny Depp played Ichabod Crane, reimagined as a skeptical police constable. Um, if you haven't seen that movie, I would recommend it. I really like it. I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix at the moment, but also this isn't a plug for Tubi, but if you have Tubi, T-U-B-I, it's free and there's tons of just movies on this. There's tons of horror movies. Um, like my favorite, one of my favorite horror movies is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. That's on there. Um, go check it out. That's not a plug for them, but like, it's awesome. Um, another modern adaptation of Sleepy Hollow was the 2013 Fox series Sleepy Hollow, which put an interesting twist on the classic tale by making the ghostly headless horseman one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse and transporting the 19th century characters into modern time. That's actually a really good show too. And I'm certain that it's on Hulu, 
because I see it every time I get on Hulu, but I don't know how long it will be on Hulu. So go check it out. That's a really good one. I really enjoy um, that show. Every now and again, I'm going to just update for the news, um, news articles, um, topics relating to the paranormal field or um, the haunt industry. Um, and with all of this coronavirus going on, um, there's a quite a significant um, update that I wanted to put out there. Um, this is the update on Trans World 2020 trade show. If you don't know what Trans World is, Trans World is the largest Halloween industry expo um, in Saint, and it's held in St. Louis. Um, the article reads: The St. Louis show um, has been canceled for 2020. Trans World has planned to produce a new show in late July. In, Ju- in late July a garage sale slash Midwest Haunters convention type show. Uh, Vendors can bring anything and everything that they have to sell it on the show show floor. Think of a giant garage sale. Just everything is haunt related. In addition, some vendors will have the regular booth selling products. The new show will take place on in Chicago on July 24th and 26th, 2020 bearing another cancellation due to the virus conditions. Um, learn more about this show at www.midwesthonorsconvention.com. Also, the Transworld Virtual Tour can be found at transworldvirtualshow.com. And with that, the Darkness Haunted House Tour was canceled, um, but Transworld will return to St. Louis in 2021 on March 4th. Hot World has offered free ads in our magazine to help. So if that is something that you need to know or want updated on, there you have it. So today in this episode, we talked about the um, Headless Horseman Hayride in New York, which is definitely on my haunt bucket list to go to. If I ever make it out to New York, I don't know when I would make it out to the East Coast, but um, it's definitely on the the list to go to, um, along with quite a few others that are out there that we're actually going to touch upon in this um, in this season, season one of Foggy Jack Live. Also, we went over the story of Sleepy Hollow and the Headless Horseman, which is one of my favorite parts in a haunted house. I worked at, um, here in Utah, I worked at Nightmare on 13th. And in that haunted house, they have a Headless Horseman scene. I'm not going to tell you much because I don't want to ruin the surprise if you go, but um, that is one of my favorite scenes to go through in the haunted house when I am there. Um, so, if you are a haunted house that would like to be featured here, you can contact me in the various ways I will explain in a moment, but also, if you have a creepy paranormal experience, story, um, if you saw a ghost, if you, um, live in a haunted house, um, or if you run a haunted house and you are willing to share, um, your experiences, your stories, please contact me. Um, please go follow, lick, wow, not lick, like, click, share, and repost all of this. Um, you can find all of my information um, on Instagram at, my handle is at foggyjack13, same with Twitter, at foggyjack13. Facebook is to be decided because Facebook, I think, is my enemy. (laughs) I just don't understand Facebook. Also, um, I have a Google voicemail set up 
which is 801-613-7466. So you can call me on that. It'll just go straight to a voicemail. You can leave me a message there. We can talk. We can um, discuss you getting on the podcast, sharing your story, sharing your information, or your haunted house. You can get on here and talk about your haunted house as well. And you can email me at horrorhaunts at gmail.com, which is H-O-R-R-O-R-H. You, I mean, H-A-U-N-T-Z at gmail.com. I swear, I hope I get better at this. If I don't, my 10 listeners, uh, thank you for sticking with me till episode five when I finally crash and burn. Um, just to let you guys know, Facebook or Instagram is definitely where I am most active. Make sure you go follow me on Instagram so you can get all the updates and everything about that. Um, also, Patreon, Foggy Jack Life Podcast on Patreon. Just search that. Um, this podcast is definitely supported from Patreon. So please, if you can, help me out. Um, and it would be greatly appreciated if you can do that. So until next time we meet here at the Hollow, where the haunters meet the haunted, I'm your host, Freeman, and we will see you next time. Ha, 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 ha.